Before you dive in, hit that subscribe button and join the Forgotten War Fronts, where we uncover the untold innovations that shaped survival itself. Because sometimes it's not the biggest weapons that win wars. It's the smallest ideas that keep men alive. Now let's talk about a fire that didn't burn, a flame you couldn't see, and the ingenious little stove that kept soldiers alive in the deadliest winters of World War II. Forget the bullets and bombs for a second. In the frozen battlefields of Europe, another war was raging, the war against cold. On the Eastern Front, temperatures dropped below minus 30 degrees Celsius. Breath turned to frost before it left a man's lips. Metal rifles burned the skin like dry ice. Food frozen solid. Cans of rations became bricks. Water had to be hacked from ice. But even when a soldier managed to melt snow, lighting a fire meant suicide. One wisp of smoke could give away an entire unit's position to enemy artillery or planes circling overhead. So soldiers were trapped between hunger and death, between freezing and being found. The question became brutally simple. How do you eat without lighting a fire? Somewhere in 1930s Germany, an inventor named Erich Schumm was asking a similar question, not for war, but for convenience. His company, Esbit, short for Erich Schum's fuel in tablet form, developed a strange little miracle, a compact, solid fuel that burned hot, but left no smoke, no smell, and almost no trace. The chemical behind it was hexamine, a blend of formaldehyde and ammonia that ignited with a nearly invisible blue flame. It didn't need much oxygen, worked even in thin mountain air. And crucially, it stayed dry even when dropped in snow. When the German army saw it, they realized they'd stumbled on something revolutionary. By 1936, soldiers were issued a simple folding metal stand. A pump. Puckark. Chico the safes. They looked like a toy, but could boil half a litre of water in minutes. No moving parts, no noise, no smoke, just stealth heat. This was the battlefield equivalent of invisible magic. The Esbit stove used a single tablet of solid fuel that burned for about 15 minutes. Two tablets could heat an entire ration or a small pot of soup. The whole kit, stove plus six fuel tablets, fit inside a tin smaller than a man's hand. Imagine soldiers crouched in snow-filled trenches, wind howling across an endless white horizon. They'd unfold the little stove, shield it with their hands, strike a match, and wait. Within seconds, the faintest blue shimmer would flicker to life, almost invisible, almost unreal. That soft, silent flame turned snow to steam, rations to meals, despair to endurance. This wasn't about luxury. It was about survival. A single hot drink could mean the difference between frostbite and another day alive. The brilliance of the Esbit stove wasn't just in its chemistry. It was in what it represented. In a war dominated by tanks and bombers, this was the soldier's private victory. It didn't roar, it whispered. It didn't destroy, it preserved. German mountain troops and pilots were among the first to carry them. But soon, word spread across the front lines. Allied soldiers discovered them in captured gear and couldn't believe how efficient they were. Many traded for them, copied them, even built makeshift versions using scrap metal. By 1943, elite Allied units like the British SAS and American Mountain Divisions had adopted similar systems. 
they realized that in places like the Ardennes or the frozen mountains of Norway, the enemy wasn't just the opposing army, it was nature itself. The Esbit stove became the great equalizer, a tiny metal lifeline that kept men fed and hidden. Soldiers were nothing if not resourceful. They found ways to stretch every gram of fuel. To block the wind, they dug small pits in the snow or used their helmets as makeshift shields. Some wrapped tinfoil around the base to reflect heat back up toward their food. In deep snow, they'd build small chambers. Snow ovens, really, burying the stove just enough to trap heat without suffocating the flame. Inside these frozen fortresses, a cup of coffee could brew undisturbed while enemy patrols passed within earshot. That's how vital silence was. The Esbit flame was practically invisible at night. No smoke trail, no flicker of orange to betray a soldier's position. It was stealth cooking before stealth was even a military concept. After the war ended, tanks rolled home and planes retired to museums, but the Esbit stove didn't disappear. It simply went camping. Mountaineers, explorers and survivalists discovered it anew. The exact same design, that folding metal stand, those white fuel tablets, is still sold today under names like Esbit and Coglan's solid fuel stove. Even modern militaries pack them into emergency kits and lifeboats because when gas leaks, matches fail and batteries die, that old Kogshiwu invention still works. Light it. Boil water. Survive. Simple as that. It's a design so pure it hasn't needed to change in nearly 90 years. And that's saying something in a world obsessed with upgrades. There's a quiet lesson in all this. The Esbeet stove wasn't a weapon, yet it saved lives. It didn't shout innovation, it whispered practicality. In an era where armies built rockets and atomic bombs, one of the most important tools of survival was a pocket stove the size of a wallet. It proved that endurance isn't about strength, it's about adaptability. When soldiers huddled around those faint blue flames, they weren't just fighting to stay warm. They were fighting to remain human in a war designed to strip that humanity away. That's the true legacy of the smokeless stove. It was the warmth of intelligence in a world frozen by conflict. Today, the Esbit stove remains a cult favourite among survivalists and military historians. Preppers keep it in bug-out bags. Campers swear by it for ultralight trips. And every time that blue flame flickers, it tells the same story. That even in chaos, the simplest designs can save the most lives. It's a relic of ingenuity born from desperation. A reminder that human survival often depends on quiet brilliance, not brute force. So next time you boil a cup of coffee on a camping trip, think about those soldiers who did the same, huddled in silence under snow. The only warmth around them coming from a flame no one could see. If you found this story as fascinating as we did, don't just watch. Subscribe to the Forgotten War Fronts. We bring you the hidden inventions, secret strategies and small miracles that changed history. Because the past isn't just about battles, it's about survival. So hit that like button, share this story and remember, sometimes the quietest flame burns the brightest.